Greetings, fellow investigators, and welcome back to our video podcast, Into the Darkness, where my friends and I play the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. I'm your host, Tom Rayleigh. The campaign is Spawn of Azathoth. It was written by Doc Herbert, and our game master is John Hook. And this is episode 19. Our recap will be given by Holly Buto as your character, Edith Thomas. So without any further delay, let's continue our journey into the darkness. Holly? If someone had asked me a year ago, if I thought your whole life could be turned upside down in a week, I would have said that change doesn't happen that fast. But here I am with no home, no job, and no family, days after a bunch of strangers showed up on my front step. Sylvia, mom, Jesus, I'm sorry what those things did to you. I hope, I hope it was painless. I hope that wherever you are, you're at peace. We went to check on the creatures that Dr. Saladin calls the Sasquatch. They've left the dwelling where we first found them. We looked for them, but we couldn't find a trace. I don't blame them for leaving this place. We found remnants of the object that crashed to earth we took a few samples and found the site where it landed. However, we were unable to find the object itself. Were the Migo drawn to this area because of it, or did they arrive with it? All we know is that they are ruthless. They nearly killed all of us when they destroyed the fire tower in an enormous explosion. Dr. Augustine is still recovering after being at death's door. <sighs> I needed to leave that place. There was nothing left for me with Sylvia gone. Bob was killed, suffering Sylvia's fate. Vasily and Dimitri were taken, killed or worse. Even if I could have stayed on at the observatory, I wouldn't. The events of those days will haunt me, and I don't think I'll ever go back. Dr. Long has offered to help me find employment with the group that he works with. It sounds like there is more traveling to do to uncover the nature of Nemesis. There's so much I just don't know about what these men are investigating, but there's been no time to learn. Hopefully that will come. For now, we're headed to the Andaman Islands. For eight years, Sylvia tried to get me to leave the nest and it takes her death to get me to go. And in the company of five strange men, no less. I think she'd almost laugh at that. If we were the type to keep social circles, I'm sure tongues would be wagging. There is so much I wish we could have talked about, and I think I'll carry that regret with me forever. But that wasn't Sylvia's way. For now, I'll do what she always taught me, keep my chin up and eyes on the horizon. I don't know what's to come. No home, no job, no family but I think I have some friends. I feel like this could be the beginning of something big or maybe the beginning of the end. Very nice. All right, so you guys have uh, successfully returned to Providence and you have been here about a month. Uh, not long after returning, you uh, booked passage to uh, India in order to then uh, carry through and forward to the Andaman Islands beyond that. Um, but the ship wasn't going to leave for close to a month. So you have been in Providence for quite some time in, in the New England area and able to uh, rest, recuperate, recharge those batteries, read some books, whatever you'd like to do. Um, you also noted there was a newspaper article not long after you, uh, got back to Providence about how the observatory has burnt, has been burned to the ground. And apparently there is, uh, reports that an albino was seen in the area just after the fire started. It's unknown what uh, caused the fire though. Hmm. What a terrible loss. What a 
after Tuesday night academies. Not going to recover quickly from that. What's well, that's? Uh, I would not call the loss of that building the greatest tragedy that occurred there. Oh, of course, of course. Um, I'm also sure that we were reasonably insured. I just hope Vasily and Dmitri don't have relatives that come looking for us. Okay, well, I guess it's time to pack. Is it, what type of weather is out there in the Adamana Islands anyway? You are aware that it tropical. is a tropical jungle. Okay. Mr. Cuthbert Cornelius, have you ever been to India? I have not been to India. It's hot, it's humid, it smells, it's uh, full of Dread. insects that will uh, ultimately kill you if you let them. Oh, Malaria, dear. all sorts of nasty things. It's still a lovely place. <laughs> Wonderful. It has its place. I will pack accordingly. Um, when do we leave? When is our uh, ticket for our tickets? Tomorrow. Yeah, ship we're on. Uh, you are Tomorrow, on. Yes. Yes. Uh, you will take off on the Atlantic Star tomorrow. Well, yes, we better get all completely. I actually it, my stuff already. It is a it is a merchant freighter, so it will it will run the merchant lines instead of the uh, luxury uh, shipping lines. So it should cut a couple of days off your trip. Yes, but like, are we going to be in rusty old boxes? Or there are cabins. They 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 do take people, but just not nearly as many people. And probably the food isn't as fancy. Uh, negative. Correct. Uh, and so it's it was late May, so it's now July. Mm -hmm. Steaming hot. Lovely. Won't be any hotter in Andaman Islands, probably. In fact, they might be below the equator. It might be the best time to visit. So is everyone prepared? And uh, what has any, oh. has anyone done anything of note uh, while you were gone? One thing that we need to do is it's time to roll our improvement stats. So why don't we do that first? So go ahead and check your character yeah. sheets. If you had any successful skills, you can go ahead and roll those. And we shall all have covered recovered full hit and points by now. Go ahead and recover all your hit points. And for luck, go ahead and roll 3d10 and add that much luck to yourselves, please. 13. 18. 18. Pretty good. Really? 18, yeah, 18. <laughs> Sal, did you get a three? I got, I got a one, a two, and a seven. <laughs> Jeez. That sucks. Uh, Edith did well, it looks like. Yeah, 20. <laughs> I got I got one, one, and then 10. So. Oh, God. <laughs> but 12. Still more than me. Um, do we get any sanity back? Um, yes. Everyone can recover D6 sanity. Yay. Um, this is not boding well. I want to roll with these. I got five. Uh... Okay. Oh, and I had a magic point bled. I forgot why, but your that magic, comes yeah, back your magic per yeah, easily, yeah, overnight sleeping does it. Yeah. We took those guns with what us, didn't we? Drained my 
We yeah, we have okay. we have two we have. black potatoes that are guns. <laughs> yeah. So there's you guys could that. spend you could have spent some of your time analyzing and trying to work on those, test those out. I'm sure you guys want to look more at the object too that fell and fragments we have, maybe under some more scientific equipment than what we had back in Montana. Yeah, I guess we should take those glowing fragments to uh, the chemistry lab or the physics lab at the university. In fact, uh, if they're not too hot to handle, Long could take a, some of the fragments up to Miskatonic too, so spread the intellectual wealth. Particularly as we think that was a precursor of something that is, you know, a celestial body that is en route. Yeah, so taking so taking my notes of Nemesis's um, progress that was being tracked at the university, so the astronomical data that Dimitri and Vasily had collected. I suppose I would take some of what we obtained from the crash site and that back up to my offices, my office at Miskatonic, I'll have an easier time using my reference stuff there. And I suppose if Edith wants to come along, I can try to find, help her network at the university to try to get a position in, uh, mm -hmm. in Arkham. I'm assuming you're going to, you're all going to catch me and Dr. Augustine up on everything that's going on. Yep. I'd like to make sure finish off that book I was studying so studiously for hours that night. I will pour in more hours if at all possible. I think I want to better arm myself. I've got a Derringer, but I think I want a gun. A little more punch than a 22. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, now with my experience, I would like to, uh, yeah, upgrade my my uh, 32 to maybe a 38. Okay, go ahead. That is doable. Never got to use that shotgun once. There's always time. I'll carry a knife as well. Or, Knife's or, a good idea, yeah. Yeah, some kind of weapons. But for skill improvements, my dodge went up by a whole two points. <laughs> and then three points shotgun. Uh, five points in physics. So apparently exercising the brain on the uh, crashing object and from these notes of nemesis i've learned something and as to studying the book of ibon and the fragments of de vermis mysteries should we pick anything up or lose anything in that practice yes Sadly, I don't read or speak German, but I am fluent with Latin and French. All right. Um, so there is enough time for just one person to study the Book of Ibon. And uh, the fragments of uh, De Vermis Mysterious that you have, um, two people can study those fragments. I, and, and I that's, have the... that's And that's just the Providence time. That's why you've been at home. Um, um, I have 55 in Latin, so I'll make a English translation of the fragment of the vermis. Okay, so you want to be one of the two people 
to yeah. study De Vermis, and then you want to try and do a, a translation for helping of others? Mm-hmm. Okay. Maybe maybe you and I will work on that together. I also have a 55 in mind. All right. So, so I'll we'll have... So I'm hearing uh, Dr. Saladin and Dr. Baxter are going to be both doing the the uh, uh, De Vermis Mysterious. Who would like to dive into the Book of Ibon? If I'll, anyone. I did the first half of that, I believe. So I'll I'll finish up the second half. Okay. So I think I put five hours into it. All right. So it'll take time to finish it out. So you'll you'll eat up the rest of the time to do that. All right. Um, the Book of Ibon uh, is in English, so uh, go ahead and give me an uh, Cornelius, do an English language roll. Okie dokie. All right. That is a 49, so that would be a... Uh, oh, that's Yeah, that's a pass. Okay. Uh, so, lose 2d4 insanity. Oh, jeez. Oh, great. There's a 3, and... Oh, another three. Oh, great. Six. <laughs> Which is fine uh, because it's a it's a prolonged loss. So it does not, Got it. it won't trigger a, a temporary insanity. Got it. Um, so go ahead and increase your Cthulhu Mythos by eight percentage points. And Ooh, reduce, nice. re- reduce your maximum uh, sanity maximum possible sanity by whatever your uh, total number of Cthulhu Mythos is. Got it. So that is, so maximum is now here down eight. Ouch. Oh, well, I wasn't up that high anyway, so that's just bringing my maximum closer to what it is. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's good. All right, and then okay. All right, so Cornelius one, two. All right, roll a d10 four times, and I need different numbers on each one. Five, 10, five again, seven. Five, so ten, re-roll, five, seven. Reroll the five. Four. Okay, so four, five, seven, ten. Correct. Okay. All right, so uh, as you studied the book, uh, it seemed to have uh, unlocked a number of other secrets. So in addition to that uh, uh, dream brew um, uh, formula that you, that you uh, ascertained from the book, you picked up uh, four more um, secrets, mysteries, um, strange incantations, if you will. And, uh, and so they had some, some very strange, uh, names, uh, to them as at least you, you kind of, you know, call them this now, uh, to, um, so there's one that, uh, basically, um, you kind of, uh, write this as as its title uh, contact and then the uh, i'm gonna have to spell it because i can't say it um z h o t h a q q u a h oh yeah south okay and then you found another one that says uh, uh, form doorway. That'd be very handy in the library. OK. 
Okay. And then you have another one that says um, uh, enchant blade. Oh, yes. Good for letter openers. This is great. <laughs> I, library use all the way. I wonder if that Zothaqua guy is a good librarian. I'll have to teach him the Dewey Decimal System. Exactly. And the the last one that you uh, seem to have ascertained, it really haunted you, this one. Um, but it just it's simply known as Withering. Withering Heights. My God, what does this mean? Okay. Gentlemen, with the uh, Dervermis Mysterious, um, you may each give me a Latin roll, please. Oh, five. 27. That is the regular. Those both sound good. That just right. hard. Yep. All right. So each of you lose 2d6. I'm sorry. These. Uh, this is not the full book. Each of you lose 2d4. Of sanity. Sanity. Hmm? Sorry. Yep. Three and a four. Ah. I was much saner than I should have been anyway, given yeah, what, so what Baxter is. That's right. Each of you gain five Cthulhu Mythos. Which brings me to 30, which brings my sanity down to 70. Me too, 30. Actually, 69. Nice. Because it doesn't go up to 100. It goes up to 90. All right. And then one. We gain the ability to read right. fortunes. <laughs> um, uh, each of you roll a D8 twice and give me different numbers for each of you. Well, you can have doubles amongst yourselves, but eight and six. All right, six and eight. And Five three and, seven. and two. Three and two. Okay. All right. So for uh, Dr. Sal, I missed what you said, Dr. Long. Oh, I'm not. I don't think I'm there. If it's okay. Correct. Three. Sorry. All right. So for Saladin, uh, you had a six and eight. Mm hmm. Okay, um, so you get one, uh, you're able to make out enough out of one um, uh, that's, that you have titled Invoke Invisible Servant. Mm. And then you had an eight. Correct. And you also discover one that you've uh, titled uh, the Vurish sign. Vurish sign. Nice. Those seem just right for Zeno. Exactly. Yeah. Think of how you could get out at that market with an invisible servant to help you out. Yeah. People's wallets and whatnot. It's about time that somebody follows me around. That's what I told them to do. <laughs> All right. Uh, but, Dr. Baxter, you uh, seem to key in on a couple of different uh, pieces of information. And so you came away with something that you're calling uh, form scrying glass. Mm. And what was your other number? You had two and what? I think I had... Was it two and three or three and two four? and three? Two and three. Yeah, that's what I heard him say. Okay. And 
Your other one seems quite vile. It's a uh, invoke demon. Not for the faint of heart. Not for the faint of heart. All right. Uh, so Dr. Long and uh, Edith uh, went to uh, Arkham. And um, and so you guys were uh, working on trying to get some of the, the fragments looked at, uh, trying to get Edith... Uh, possibly placed at the university. Uh, Edith, give me a um, uh, credit rating roll, please. No. <laughs> it's a 75 out of 30, so no. We'll just say you don't interview well. Okay. Um, and so um, they have decided to pass on uh bringing you on full time but um they have uh, they have your name in case they uh need to uh contact you you know an opening might occur but uh yeah so they've decided to pass um and uh dr long uh you were getting some of the uh some of the different teams physics geology chemistry to uh, kind of start looking at these uh, fragments, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Correct. Um, I need um, everyone, the whole team, to give me con rolls, if you would, please. Mm-hmm. 43 <laughs> out of... Uh, 16 is a hard success. That's an 87 out of 55, so that's a fail. 56 for 45, also not successful. Okay. No one one fumbled, right? Correct. No. Okay. Uh, For the failures, um, the trip back from Montana... um, thankfully did not take any longer uh, because uh, upon returning to uh, Providence, um, you guys must have picked up a a bug or something and you spent quite some time, you know, several days uh, at home um, just being ill. Uh, You feel well enough now, but there seems to have been a little bit, maybe a, a turn in uh, your overall um, your overall wellness. Uh, everyone else who was successful, um, you feel pretty good. Not bad. Uh, okay, so uh, you've taken these uh, these fragments to Arkham, and you've gotten these different teams involved. And uh, uh, Dr. Long, you are receiving uh, a lot of calls um, where they're like, man, you know, where did you get this? What is this? This is unlike anything we've ever seen before, uh, unprecedented, uncharted. Is this a hoax? Did you make this? What's going on? Uh, we, uh, Miss Thomas and myself found this at a observatory in Montana um, near a meteorite crash. So they, it originate, it has an extraterrestrial origin. That can be the only answer. Yeah, they they are uh, flabbergasted. It it uh, it doesn't seem to correlate with any known element on the periodic table. It um, it seems to have um, heat when it shouldn't. Um, it uh, seems to be uh, diminishing ever so slightly. Um, 
yeah, it's, it's really, it's really bizarre. Um, it's, it's even registering now on a device called a, a Geiger counter. It's uh, quite unusual. You probably don't want to sleep with this under your pillow. That's for sure. So now with bringing such an exciting discovery to the university, can we swayed the university to reconsider <laughs> Edith as kind of an, an, even if it's not a full position, even a part-time research associate or affiliate in some sense. Um, they're willing to consider the argument. Um, why don't you make a pushed roll on, um, on your, Dr. Long, on your credit rating? Um, you can have a bonus die because you did present um, a uh, geological uh, anomaly. And this is where I get kicked out of the, the university. Here we go. <laughs> oh, no, I failed. 64-74 are not high enough. So they were they were seriously considering um, your, uh, your support letter to uh, bring her on. Um, but that was uh, until one morning, uh, several scientists... Um, stumbled out of the lab three of them uh blind because they had been um trying to uh study this thing under microscope and uh the exposure did something to their eyes and so they all stumbled out blind and it's now going to cause uh, a negative impact on the community on the on the scientific community and uh and yeah so for uh for inflicting this on your fellow uh staff um uh, they've asked you to politely tender your resignation that's a terrible crime Well, hmm. Fortunately, <laughs> I know some folks down at Brown now. So. <laughs> Quite fortunately. And speaking right. of which, while I'm not relinquishing my position on the board at Brown University, I am going to take this month to announce at the bank my early retirement. Ah, uh, excellent. The idea of sitting around with ledgers 40 odd hours a week just because the family built all this money is not going to ha- not going to stand with Philip Baxter. So, Myron the, Baxter uh, is taking an early retirement with a generous package. They they are sad to hear you go. Um the the staff uh, organizes a um a going away celebration for you that is to last no longer than 30 minutes and the time will be deducted from their uh, time card for those who want to attend. Um, but um, but there is a, a very small, uh, very small uh, collection of, of coworkers who uh, have uh, quiet conversations in corners and just say, okay, have a good luck. And it's still really awkward since I don't know any of their names. Yes. Yes. Doing a, doing a lot of that triangulation where I try to get people to introduce each other in front of me so that I can. It's all. All a bunch of strangers. All a bunch of strangers. Yeah. I will reward those who were uh, loyal enough to my predecessor in this body. Uh, by you know providing some quality pastries at the four, thirty minute soiree. Uh, it is the talk of the soiree. They're they're quite impressed and and didn't know that you had that that level of um, of spontaneity, excitement, <laughs> and uh, and just uh, you know 
fellowship about you. Um, it was uh, quite unheard of. Um, hell, they, they they thought steam would vent from your from your tight collar if you should ever have loosened it. My trip to Montana has really opened my eyes to other possibilities. Um, and there's also the matter of the remaining vials of dream draft. Um, one was sent to the lab, five were consumed. Zeno wanted to sneak the other four out of Myron's house. Myron wanted to make sure, Philip wanted to make sure he continued to have access. Um, and I believe as we left it, uh, you know, Philip Baxter's dependence on the dream draft carried over into Myron Dexter's body. So not sneaking off to Ulthar is going to be some kind of challenge for Philip. I don't know how you want to resolve that. Uh, yes. Um, yeah, it will be... Uh, You know, there's always um, the possibility of of, of 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 a natural return uh, while sleeping, mm. but uh, uh, you think uh, being at sea for nearly a month may make it difficult to sleep because that those are those conditions could be rough on uh, on a person while trying to sleep. So there may be some. Uh, some difficulties uh, while I see. Okay. Dr. Augustine. Um, so Thanks. you've returned to Providence and um, what would you like to do? Well, on top of the things that I have private uh, message to you, I um, will also ring my friends at the Miskatonic University. And I will ask about, uh, uh, discreetly ask for him about some of the things that I've seen and if they know any more on that to help me with a, a study. Okay. And I will also look over my old case files from my um, previous patients because I had Zeno talking about ghouls and i've also had patients talking about dogs who came through corners of their rooms i had various other creatures and weird things that i dismissed as manias and all that and then i gave them treatment and sent them to loony bins that where they still are now and yeah, maybe they were correct. And I will feel just a tiny bit of guilt. A very tiny bit of guilt. Well, yes. Why don't you, do you have uh, any Cthulhu mythos? Uh, I have none at all. <laughs> you have none at all. None at all. All right. Um but it seems like you're you're becoming a believer, despite not having any direct personal experience. Although yes. you have direct personal experience, weren't you there with the Migo? Yeah, I was. For some reason, well, I have nothing. You should have marked at least five per, uh, percent for that. Okay, so I at least have five percent. <laughs> yeah, I had nothing marked for. Now I do. But yeah, on top of all the other fit, well, on top of the other main thing that I messaged you, I am basically yes. getting more intrigued into everything and trying to understand. Make these make things. a Cthulhu mythos roll for me, if you would, please. Ooh, a sixteen is not good enough. Do you want to make it good enough? Can I? I'd, okay. Yeah, I will. I definitely will. I have a lot of luck, so I will make that good enough. 
spending basically near enough overlook I gained. All on right. That thing, so. <laughs> on, on just that thing. Um, so by having a uh, successful uh, Cthulhu Mythos, um, you are becoming more and more uh, convinced that uh, these past case files that you're going through really are legit. And, um, and you, like you said, you put these people away probably instead of really treating them, you, you just kind of sent them away. And um, so that guilt is kind of weighing on you. So go ahead and roll a D4. Yeah, that is a four. Lose that much sand. Okay. Well, I basically Racked, everything I've gained. Guilt. Everything I've gained is basically all gone. <laughs> all gone. All gone. Uh, yes. Uh, that, I might even be thinking the poor man with the the dog. He's probably dead by now. <laughs> Um, and if you would make a pow roll for me, okay. uh, 79 on 55, so it's a fail. Okay. Um, you have been, uh, since you've, uh, met up with these people and on the trip back and while you've been here in Providence, which where are you staying in Providence? Uh, or, I have, you, or, or do you go to Arkham? I have a house here. Or I also have a house in Arkham. I have a house in both places. So okay. I do uh, stay here. So um, there was something about this Montana trip that has been unlocking um, uh, repressed memories for you. And so you've been having uh, some... Uh, vague dreams that you're having a difficult time remembering. Uh, but you do wake up more often than not covered in sweat. Mm. Yes. I might even, when I wake up, I might feel along my back and very, yeah, because it's, it's, it's tingly. It's itchy when you awake. Uh, uh. What? I need to get to the bottom of this. How can I treat other patients when, I, when I'm not even in a stable position myself? Yeah, pretty, pretty unusual. So that, that kind of covered the, uh, the period while y'all were um, waiting for uh, the Atlantic Star to um, finally come and, and come into port and come into port it has so yeah. <laughs> Cornelius is, is quite uh, zoned into his book I love it just, just uh, trying to practice this lovely yeah. enchant spell is so intriguing with my with my letter opener very nice All right, so um, you guys are able to uh, board uh, the Atlantic Star. Uh, again, if you wanted to uh, make any updates or improvements or changes to personal equipment, you like I heard some weapons were being changed. That's great. Um, when you board, again, this is a, uh, uh, a private um, merchant vessel. The, uh, the captain... Uh, you know, is greeting you guys as you're as you're coming aboard, um, and uh, uh, so he's a he's an Englishman, um, uh, and uh, he says, uh, "You gentlemen and ladies, um, I don't mind you bringing whatever it is that." Uh, you wish to, to carry a board with you, but you should be warned that uh, uh, Calcutta 
has uh, very strict rules on uh, the bringing of, of weapons into their homeland. So uh, you will need to uh, bend an ear, if you know what I mean, if you wish to uh, get these through customs. So you should be prepared for that. Of course. Good to know. Thank you. And um, oh, where, where, where did I put it, Captain? Uh, uh, take this. It is a gift. Oh, yeah. So, Thank you. Don't worry. It is. Uh, I wouldn't give you anything to use. This is brand new, perfectly bought. Not that long ago. There you go, sir. Thank you. As he holds it between just two fingers and gestures for you to come aboard as y'all are boarding like a gangplank, you know, straight up into the, into the boat. Yes, Dr. Long, uh, you have found your personal relationship estranged now. So sad. Yeah, really uh, hard to convince the uh, the missus that leaving for a month with no accountability of what I was doing and no explanation, followed by losing my job, followed by, oh, by the way, I'm going to the Adam and Islands. So I won't be lo- looking for a new job anytime soon. Uh, yeah, does not go so well. Probably does not go well. Uh, once everyone boards via the gangplank, uh, the captain holding his uh, new tie uh, promptly drops it overboard as the gangplank is pulled on board and the ship uh, gets underway. Uh, so you're going to be at sea for uh, quite some time. Um uh, almost 27 days. Um, so in that time, you'll be going uh, across the Atlantic, past Gibraltar, through the Mediterranean, through the Suez Canal, mm-hmm. and finally, you know, around the tip of, uh, of uh, India to Calcutta. During that time, more reading can be accomplished if you so desire. There, um, uh, since Dr. Saladin and Dr. Baxter uh, were each successful with their Latin role, together they've been able to uh, put together a um, a workable copy of Divernus Mysterious. So um, while at sea, two people may study Divernus Mysterious and one may study the Book of Ivan, if you so desire. I will, I will do one of those. I am fine with either one, if any of the others have a preference. I haven't really looked at Ivan yet, so I might try to garner that. I will using my 30 in Latin and the translation so graciously provided by Baxter and Saladin, and I'll take a crack at Divernus Mystery. Okay. Anybody else want to look at uh, Divernus Mysterious? I'll have a look at it. Okay. Uh, so um, all three of these are now in English. So if you would each do, give me an English role. Yes. And Dr. Long, let me know if your English role is lower than your Latin also. Oh my God, I rolled a hundred. I can't even read my own language. I rolled a 99. <laughs> it just sounds like the these are rough. This is, this is some absolute rubbish. <laughs> this doesn't Who translated anything. this? Can't possibly be my fault. <laughs> yeah, it, it is, uh, it's, the translation is all over the place, apparently. You guys agree that it's just impossible to follow. Dr. Baxter, how did yours go? A regular success for my education. Okay. Um, so the, the slow boat to India 
is uh, uneventful other than anything that you guys yourselves do, which there's not a lot to do on this ship. Um, so through reading the book of Ibon, um, as you are pulling into Calcutta, or by the time you get to Calcutta, this may be a little bit foretelling into the future, though. Go ahead and roll <clears throat> 2d4, if you would, Dr. Baxter. <laughs> A three and a four. So lose that much that. sand. Yep, lose that much sand. Oh. Gain eight percentile. Yes, gain eight percentile in their Cthulhu mythos. Oof. Gee, I'm 38. I'm dangerous. Quite a, you have a lot of knowledge. Pass me by. Um, and uh, you will need to roll a d10 uh, four times, and uh, you will also gain the uh, 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 brew dream draft. Mm. So both you and Cornelius will uh, will have that one. Three, no, another three, five, one, another one, another three, another one, and eight. One, three, five, eight. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, so you, uh, you seem to decipher one uh, that seems uh, quite formidable um and it simply says uh uh summon sultan hmm i wonder what kind of sultan that might be there's another that you find uh it says uh, contact and um and i'll spell this just because i'm unsure on how to pronounce it mm -hmm. uh, but it's a k T H U L H gracious U T gracious me something perfect to recite while traveling over the high seas yes yes uh you find another um uh, uh called uh, uh contact and I will spell this one as well. Uh, Z H O T H A Q Q U A H. That's just me. It's the same one that Corny got. You can summon him together. Well, yes, we can hold hands and kind of sacrifice a virgin. And then the final one is called Fog of the Lost Island. Oh, so fat. I can see me and Corny late at night on the deck, staring at the sea, mumbling to each other. Um. Mm, 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 mm. All right. Uh, so during this uh, this long sea voyage, um, <laughs> during this long sea voyage, is there anything else that uh, anyone wants to try and and do? Or? I would. I would like to try to perform the enchant blade. It's just to see. I'm, I'm not. I kind of believe what's there's some something to this, but yeah. I just wanted to see what. How is this ramblings of a madman, or is this? There's there something to it, and this seemed like a good test. And uh, and my wonderful. Librarian's letter opener would be good to try this on, perhaps. So, according perhaps. to this, 
All I have to do perhaps, is follow perhaps. the instructions. E. Oh. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Let me just double check something real quick for you. And everyone on the boat heard the agonized cry late at night. When we got to Cuthbert's stateroom, he was dancing on the ceiling. With the very enchanting knife. <laughs> With the most enchanting knife. Um, okay, so what, 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 what blade are you doing this on? My trustworthy letter opener all right so um after after uh uh consulting the uh the formula for this uh particular um thing that you've that you've read you realize that you will also need um a a, a small animal uh which a a ship's rat is uh fairly easy to catch and so you've you've got a rat Mickey, um, here, Mickey. <laughs> and uh and it takes a couple of hours um you uh you have to there's a there's a a, a diagram of this intricate pattern that uh you spend uh, a couple hours locked in your in your small cabin and you're scratching this diagram uh, on the floor with the blade that you intend to enchant. And so you scratch it out, you scratch it out. And once it's done, um, you um, kneel in the center, holding the, uh, the rat, You've, you're holding it down in the center of this, uh, of this intricate series of circles and, and geometric shapes that you've designed and you end up having to kill the rat with the blade and then redraw the intricate pattern that you've done on the floor with the bloodied blade as well. So to do that, um, let's see. Wait, hold on. You do realize that um, you're just practicing this uh, because uh, according to the formula, you do need a, a much larger animal, something more aligned like a horse or a bear. Uh, but you figure with a rat, you could at least just try this out. Okay. Um, it's, you figure it's a small knife. It's a small animal. Everything is the same. Uh, so go ahead and um, reduce your pow. Uh oh. Reduce your pow by one and lose two sanity. Okay. Ouch. And I will let you have this knife become enchanted. It will be a magical knife for all intents and purposes for uh, to exceed no longer than one uh, lunar cycle or one use. 
So if you use it to, to draw blood, that will be its one and only use, or it'll last unused up to one lunar cycle, at which time um, there wasn't enough energy imbibed into it, and it'll just, it'll just drain out. Okay? Okay. But you have oh. a magic knife for, for a month. Oh, my. Does that mean it does more damage or it's easier to hit? I guess. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we'll find out. It will also make it so that any any creatures that are only susceptible to magic weapons, this is available now. My God, what a bizarre book. I, I got and this was again. this was a ritual that took two hours to complete. So Lord, here I thought this was a simpler one. I, I don't think I will dabble with any more of this nonsense, but we'll see what comes of this. Okay. And um, you would have done this towards the end of your voyage to Calcutta so that uh, there's plenty of time for it to still be enchanted by the time you get to the Andaman Islands there. Anybody else have anything they want to try and do? I've also brought um, my uh, state-of-the-art portable photography equipment. Um, and I'll be, you know, taking some sunset shots, maybe some ship life, you know. And mostly, since I won't be able to probably develop any of the film until we get back stateside, I'm, you know just getting used to the machinery before the island. Sure, sure. Collecting some uh, exposed plates that you'll carry around. Store them somewhere. Keep them safe. Don't let them get, uh, don't let them get damaged or else the, uh, the image will be lost. Yes. Does this ship have a library? <laughs> no. I know, figure it was kind of a long journey. I was wondering if it did. This ship barely has bathrooms. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, Arlo would have visited Cornelius at some point. Um, Cuthbert? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, I, I hope you're not busy. Uh, oh, no, no, no. Just washing up here. Oh. <laughs> that have been, that is probably when I would have gone as well just to be um, cuff, but, um I just thought I would uh, give you a little breakdown uh, Zeb is fine I oh, guess oh yeah I have uh, taken real good care of him he's in a state of the art facility he's being oh, looked sure. after I hope he can return uh, to us at some point in the future. I, um, I have a favor to ask. You'll be only one here I've known for a long time. Oh, certainly. Um, this is going to seem a bit odd, but I didn't want to trouble a doctor with it. And could you look at my back for me? Oh, sure, sure. Oh, you got like something. Some sort of rash or something that's kind of picked up during the voyage? Uh, Let's take a look. Been troubling me for a while. So he takes off his jacket and then his waist and then his top is tied. And Cuthbert, you, you've you probably never seen Arlo without his, uh, without his sh uh, shirt and that off before. He's got two large incisions either side of his spine that go all the way down. Oh my! Oh, uh, are are you? Did you have some sort of accident or surgery here a while ago? These two incisions look like. I think. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't remember how I got them. To be fair, Cuthbert. And I'd, I'd like to edit that a little bit. So, Doctor Arlo Augustine, he calls them incisions, which would imply that it's some kind of pinky white 
scar tissue running down laterally down on either side of his spine. That would be a falsehood. Um, upon closer inspection, it's not a, a pinky white scar tissue, which might be raised, you know, like a bump. Um, but laterally down either side of his spine, it looks like there's um, a seam, like a folded flesh, but some kind of seam. And it's actually, is if you trace your finger, you can actually even kind of get your finger slipped into the seam a little bit, but it seems very, it seems very, very uh, tight, but, uh, but there does seem to be some kind of possibly some kind of seam all the way down two of them on either side of his spine. This is most peculiar. And, and you don't, you don't remember having any sort of surgery. This isn't related to that horrible, Oh, back up on that no, dreadful blasted mountain. I've had these even before my youngest child was born, and my youngest child is um, 28 years old, so. My goodness, and, and have you ever had a, a doctor look at this? I mean, this is quite peculiar. It's, so. Well, I, I assume I have at some point. I, yeah. I must have seen them before. Not, and not recently, you know, but in the past. And uh, it just is uh, some kind of strange mutation. It doesn't, at the time, it didn't seem like it was very deep or anything. It's not like you're a marsupial or something, mm, but it does have almost that pouchy kind of edging to it. But, you know, in the past, it was always yes. very, very shallow. Yes, re yes is, recently, is I asked you to have a look because recently I've been having, I don't know what to call it, with dreams or whatever and it's making it hard for me and I keep feeling this pain and I just don't want to trouble a doctor with it it doesn't I don't think it's anything did the, the, the pain you feel is it is it emanating from this from these two scars or incisions or seams or is, is the pain elsewhere I think the pain just comes I don't think it's real pain I just no Oh, 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 Arlo! I, I really think you need to have a, a professional doctor look at this. This, this looks significantly unusual and, and way beyond my scope of expertise. No, I guess I just wanted you to have a look. Is no, it's not bleeding or anything. It's no, it doesn't. It looks quite formed. It looks like it's purposely formed this way. It's. And it's not, it doesn't look like it's oozing and tearing and, and, and bloody. So it just looks like it's a natural. Purposely, purposely formed is an excellent description. Yeah, it looks, yeah, it looks, yeah, purposely formed and and as healthy as it's going to be. It it, it looks like some sort of a, a, a very uniformed malformation. Mm. Well, Thank you, Cuff. But uh, I start to put my clothes back on, and uh, yeah. So once we're back in, uh, once we're back stateside, you should come to my home and have dinner with my wife and well, my second wife and our uh, two kids. Oh yeah, that would be lovely. I haven't seen yes. them in ages, so they must no, be. Good. I don't think you've met Ariana. You you'll have met my ex Charlotte and Rose. Children from that marriage, but. but when we also get back, I, I would really encourage you to see a doctor. They, they should probably have a look at this, even if one has looked at it a while ago, just to make sure it's not threatening any you know part. It's really close to your spine. Yes, it's been there for a very long time. I as long as it doesn't, as long as it's not bleeding or. Anything like that doesn't look worse when I already know it looks. Uh, that's fine. Thank you, Cuthbert. And uh, go, uh, have a good night. And I uh, leave and walk off. Oh, you, you too. All right. Any 
other uh, vignettes or studying or anything uh, prior to Calcutta. Then you have arrived at Calcutta. Uh, here it is uh, assumed that you will disembark. You'll need to go through uh, customs um, and um, you'll need to uh, figure out whatever your, your next batch of passage is. Um, shipping uh, is possible. Uh, you can get from Calcutta down to Rangoon and then from Rangoon down to uh, uh, Port Blair, which is uh, really pretty much the capital of uh, the uh, Andaman Islands. Um, you can also take a train from Calcutta to Rangoon and then take a ship out of Rangoon. So whatever it is that you'd like to do, but um whether it is going to be by sea or by land, you will still need to go through customs here in Calcutta. <clears throat> um, and so um, let's start with Edith. Edith, is there anything that you need to declare that you want to uh, let me ask this a different way. Is there anything that you don't want customs to know about? Or is everything that you've got open and above board and could possibly be inspected? No, I have a, a gun and a knife. So whoever I need to you know, pay to look the other way, I'm definitely okay. doing that. And uh, knife, is it a pocket knife? Is it... Um, uh, an axe, a machete. Oh. What is it? Oh, no, nothing as big as an axe or machete, but you know, larger than a pocket knife. I know, like, okay. You, know, you have those knives you have like a holster for. You know what I'm talking about? All right. So you've got like a hunting knife or something yeah, like that, thank you. right? That was what okay. I was thinking of. All right. Um, uh, they're not going to actually blink twice about a hunting knife. Okay. Um, and uh, and this would have been information that you could have you know gleaned from the mm -hmm. captain or some of the other uh, you know uh, worldly travelers and you know uh, you know the ship crew and everything. Um, but so the gun. So um, do you want to? Well, what kind of approach do you want to take to try and get this through customs? If if you think that you're going to be retaining it at all after right. customs. Um, I will approach whoever is, is doing customs and, and, um, I'm assuming they speak English. All right. Do you have to understand mm -hmm. me? Okay. Passively. Um, and, and uh, possibly, okay. Um, passively. <laughs> oh, I said possibly. I was like, oh no. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, um, say that, you know, I would appreciate their discretion when looking through my items and that, um, that uh you know you don't need to look too 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 hard like sliding them a little bit of money at the same time ah ah aha uh aha -huh, uh -huh. okay um excellent um so um uh how much money uh ten ten dollars ten dollars mm -hmm. okay uh, on your character sheet, did you fill out what the uh, what the spending level is or something? I'm, I think that's let what me that see. Is. I believe it's auto populated. It is not. Um, I do not know what the spending level is for someone okay. with a thirty credit rating. A thirty credit rating. Um, Sorry, I can tell you fairly quickly. Oh, I'm 30 credit rating to the spending level is $10. Oh, well, there okay. you go. <laughs> right so in the you, cap. <laughs> all right. So you put $10 in? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so the, the, uh, the inspector uh, greets you and uh, is going through your belongings um, and does come across the, uh, the weapon and its accessory. Um, and so he, uh, he kind of, uh, grabs the little piece of paper and 
thumbs through it with a practiced single hand, just kind of thumbing through it and, uh, and then uh, folds it and kind of stashes it into his pocket in a very smooth method. Um, and then at the same time, he like flips your bag closed and zips it shut and um, writes on a piece of paper and then stamps it very loudly and shoves all of your possessions back at you. And it says next. So uh, let's have uh, let's have Dr. Long step up. Don't try to bribe him. So. Oh. Dr. Long, um, do you have anything that you're concerned about? No. No? I mean, I have... I, I'm not going to try to smuggle any weapons through. I okay. have some astronomical books and notes and things from the observatory that I still pour over all the time because that's kind of what my life is now. Um, and I don't think they're going to bother much with that. Okay, so you don't have uh, anything, any um, donations or anything? No. No? All right. So, but there are no weapons for them to uh, confiscate, right? Okay. No. Uh, so the, uh, uh, you get an inspector who opens up your bag and is kind of rifling through it. Um, and uh, and he's he's not very gentle. He's like shuffing these papers and water around and and they're getting disorganized and he seems to be kind of like searching deeply like is there something i missed and uh and he he looks at you and is kind of uh speaking quickly and and uh and seems to be uh, arguing with you in hindi and uh all right i'll give him a little something here have you oh. tried looking at this <laughs> Like and and just uh, like two dollars, <laughs> two dollars. Stop abusing my stuff. <laughs> okay, uh, so he he's uh, he's he looks at you and uh, he snatches it out of your hand, um, and then he 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 stamps the paperwork loudly and shoves your open. Uh, suitcase off the table and so the contents spill at your feet and he yells next so you've got to shuffle and get all that crap out of the way and off the floor stupid son of a freaking Dr. Augustine yes well um, me because uh, I, uh, Augustine, likes the eccentricity and things like that. Um, he will have tried, he will be trying to bring his rifle with him because he's not leaving now. And his revolver. So you have a long arm and a pistol. Yeah, I do. But okay. I also am willing to part with quite a bit of money with my 75 credit rate. <laughs> Oh, and so what, what, uh, how much are we talking? I don't know specifically. A large sum, whatever a large sum would be. I'm willing. Why don't we zero in on a large sum? Mm. What is your credit rating and spending level? Let's see. Credit rating, credit rating. 75. I don't know. I don't seem to. All have. right. I can tell you real quick 75. So your spending level is 50. Okay. Well, yeah, I will do that then. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So you, you, you will uh, have your $50 and, and pass that over. Yep. All right. Um, okay. So with, uh, with that $50 uh, donation, um, <laughs> the uh the clerk um you know so, mm, uh, and and so he sees uh what you've uh, brought in um and so he he removes the rifle uh but you can see there's a table 
uh, back behind him. And uh, there's several like crates of varying sizes. And so there's a crate that is um, longer and slightly wider than the rifle. And it's got a bunch of straw in it. And so the rifle is placed into the crate. The lid is applied and hammered shut, stamped and, 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 you know, everything, you know, information written on it and so this crate is pushed up onto the counter your bag is closed and the donation is accepted and uh and your paperwork is completed they push you on and yell yell next but your your rifle is uh inside a box nailed shut so uh so at least I have it. <laughs> well, no. At least you have it. Dr. Saladin. Yep. Um, I'm going to uh, hand him my papers with um, uh, 500 rupee, which is probably about $10. Okay. I had my money exchanged. And- Okay, but ten dollars worth of of rupee, right? Yeah. All right. Um, as and part of the papers. <laughs> yes, as part of the papers. All right, uh, and so they will go through your stuff, accept the donation, close. It's just a pistol, right? And a knife. <laughs> uh, the knife they don't care about. Yeah. Uh, so they'll they uh, they take the uh, the donation for the pistol, close the bag. And uh, way they're a little perplexed by you. They they're like, uh, "Salam," <laughs> you know, and uh, they, they bid you good day, Doctor Baxter. Namaste. Do you have anything to be concerned about? Uh, the pocket knife is certainly not of interest. The thirty-eight uh, and several rounds of ammunition are on a nice leather gun case that's strapped to some of my photographic equipment. Uh, and Saladin style, I'm going to actually paper clip uh, the $10 US bill to my visa uh, and say, you know, politely that uh, if you would be kind, that equipment there is delicate. And I attached a fee to expedite processing. Uh, they accept the fee and are incredibly helpful. Uh, and the clerk. Uh, uh, motions over to some young boys that are standing at one end. They're just kind of milling around. And he goes, uh, Porter, Porter, you need Porter? Um, uh, certainly. Uh, and my friends will, will all collect together. All right. And so he calls out and, uh, oh, 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 friends. Okay. And so they call and uh, four boys uh, run up and start kind of surrounding you guys. Uh, Zeno, we're going to need... Uh, small notes and rupees for these kids so i'll uh, you know i'll reimburse you appropriately be careful they don't take our packages and go in all directions quite all right cornelius oh yes okay <clears throat> there's some relatively uh delicate items in here so if you would mind taking good care to see that this is all okayed and passed. And as I present my paperwork, I'll slip in um, a 10 US dollars, but also from my little stash of spending money in the local, I have a five uh, pound note too, British pounds, because this is also British. And yes. that probably would go quite a ways. And I think that that little extra oomph might. Hopefully. Anyway, so I just slide that in. So there's. 10 USD and also a fiber British pound. Okay, perfect, perfect. Um, so you see him. Uh, uh, you can uh, give me a spot hidden roll, Cornelius. Certainly. Ooh, yeah, that's spot on. Actually, it's better than spot on. That is a hard. Okay. Um, so you see he um, has um, 
stamped and done all your paperwork and uh and apparently he has um in addition to his other equipment and stuff he, he has this uh grease pencil and um for whatever reason he uh also marked your bag with a with a small discreet uh white x it's a white grease pencil and he put a he put a small x on that um you notice that um uh, uh, Augustine's uh, pack bags also had a, a white X on them. And uh, he's, uh, you know, welcome to India. Enjoy Thank Calcutta. So Have a tremendous day. All right. Uh, welcome to India. Now, when we booked passage on what's the ship, the Atlantic Star, would we have also arranged for a hotel in Calcutta? Is this? A, I mean, one would do this by telegram and letter, right? Uh, yeah, it would have uh, had to have been by telegram. Um, who would who would have been in charge of that? Who would have been in charge of trying to do that? That seems like the kind of thing that Philip Baxter would have Byron Dexter's assistant do. Okay. Uh, so let's have Philip Baxter give us a, uh, a luck roll. 58? That's going to be close. Uh Yes, that is okay. I'm currently at 63, thanks to our advantage, our improvements. Okay. So you were able to get a response before uh, setting sail out of Providence. Um, and so uh, you do have a hotel. Uh, the King's Hotel is uh, available. And you already have rooms booked. Um, and these urchins... Uh, Boys, do you know the King's Hotel? Oh, yes, King's Hotel. Follow us. Follow us. Okay. Uh, so the boys come up and they uh, they pick up and grab uh, just about everything uh, if, if you let them. So they've got your camera equipment, uh, Dr. Baxter. Uh, they'll take uh, your bag, uh, Dr. Long. Miss Thomas, they'll they'll uh, gladly take your bag, and uh, Doctor Saladin. Yes, I'm keeping an eye on them. Okay. Uh, so yes, uh, oh, uh, King's Hotel, not far. Follow us, follow us, and uh, the boys uh, begin uh, hefting the gear, walking through the crowded streets of Calcutta. Calcutta is a cacophony of noise and smells, uh, of sights and color. It is um, uh, quite the, uh, the state. Huge affair of, of, of people and noise. Uh, but these kids are, are moving with uh, speed and confidence as they're uh, diving into the crowds and heading uh, up the boulevard uh, in the direction that they claim the uh, King's Hotel is at. And that's fine as long as it looks like they're going to affluent and clean places and not suddenly down dark alleys. Yes. Uh, the, you know, everything that you're seeing here in Calcutta um, all looks um, modern. It, it looks uh, well uh, appointed and, and modern. Um, Calcutta uh, is a, is a for for those in the know it is a um, city divided. Uh, they they almost rudely call it White Town and Black Town, and you guys are squarely in White Town, which is um, it it prospers under British rule, and uh, it looks like there is. Um, you know, good uh, uh, prosperity. Uh, you've and heard probably. Go ahead. Yeah, you've heard about the uh, 
the the status of Blacktown, and it is a uh, lawless, they say, lawless and uh, a place of squalor and chaos. So, interesting. So that's our our hotel. Uh, okay. Uh, the four individuals who have uh, bags being carried, each of you, please give me a luck roll. Ninety-five. Fail. Ooh, I passed something. <laughs> passed by one point. I've not lost everything in my life. <laughs> so it sounds like Edith and Dr. Saladin failed their luck. All right. As uh, you guys are approaching the hotel, uh, the boys carrying your bags, they turn their heels and they begin to run in opposite directions. Stop. Stop, thief. Uh, Are there um, uh, British military? Is there a British military presence keeping the law? Not a military presence, but there is a British police. So, you know, the, the, the uh, remnants of the Raj uh, are still uh, felt in Calcutta. Um, so, uh, yeah, you want to start calling it. Uh, Stop, police. Stop, those boys. Okay. Wait, wait, did, it, did you, were any mystical books of great importance being transported? Not in my stuff. Okay. Then I'll. Yeah, no, we're in Evis. <laughs> I don't feel quite so compelled to run after them now. All right. Um, A group luck roll. What is, who has the lowest luck? I have 43. 58. 32. Oh, 32, I think wins. Yeah. Oh, Cornelius, boy. would you do us the honors of uh, of making a group luck roll? Of course. Let's take a look. Oh, 52. <laughs> uh, yes, please help, help police. Uh, there must not be any uh, police nearby uh, because the boys uh, vanish like shadows. Um, the other two boys uh, basically drop the equipment that they were holding and they run away uh, without anything hmm. and vanish. That's a terrible business model they have. Damn. Uh, well, Miss Thomas, I'm sorry. Uh, was that uh, your stuff too, Courtney? No, I'm carrying Oh, mine. no, Zeno, you got um, a yes, bag it looks like I'm going to have to dress just like this for my entire trip. I know you lost like eight more blue shirts. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I, um, my apologies. It was my bad judgment that let those ragamuffins carry our things. Um, it should not be difficult in a place like this to replace any common goods, you know, clothing and shoes and whatnot before we move on. Fortunately, yeah, half the people here dress like I do, so... Your items might be available for purchase yeah. at a flea market shortly anyway. Possibly, <laughs> yeah. All well, too true. More worried about my gun. I actually wanted to keep that. I wonder if I could acquire it. I wonder if I could find another one before we left. Well, I'm sure we can find somebody else who can sell a firearm here. Probably for cheaper than a, well, hope maybe cheaper than it costs to try to get it through customs. Probably indeed. Well, we should have um, had someone come directly from the King's Hotel, I guess. All right. So you guys are able to check in with uh, the equipment that you still have remaining. Mm hmm. My God, are they are they serving crane tea here at the King's Hotel? Eesh. I have poor taste. <laughs> the cheap stuff. 
green tea, of course. All right. Uh, so what accommodations um, are you going to? Well, you guys want to uh, try and do a market to, to replenish anything? Um, yes. Yeah, I would like clothing. I mean, you're going to need, yeah, basics, certainly. Uh, we can have the concierge at the hotel recommend appropriate places. Uh, the bureaucrats' wives must need blouses and, you know, so on. Yeah, there are excellent, uh, uh, there's an excellent open air market, not down, you know, not far down the road. Um, and uh, they have, uh, the, the world is available in Calcutta. Anything that you could ever desire. Except perhaps reliable Western firearms, and we mostly got those. Um, you uh, you catch his attention, and uh, he says, "Oh, oh, you are you are interested in in something of that nature?" Yes. Yes. Uh, he says, "Well." That, unfortunately, you will not find at the market down the road. But if you were to uh, take a, a, a cab, and by cab, he means a handsome cab. Uh, but if you were to take a cab and, uh, and, and go to the, to the red market, they will, they will take you there. And, uh, and there you could find... Uh, that particular type of of uh, supply. Thank you. But be very careful. It is a it can be a very dangerous place. You are not going to believe what I found. <laughs> in blue. Well, for, for it looks reason, just I, like I, the I one we had in it. the dreamlands. It's lovely. All right. Um, so you want to go to the red market or go to the uh, the nice market that's not far away? Well, I'm not going to the red market alone. Um, oh. oh, what's kind of what kind of day is it? I don't want to go to the red market at night either. Yeah, you arrive fairly early. Okay. Yeah, I think I'll go with you. I'm quite interested in what they have to sell. Sounds good. Oh, come along as well. No. All right. So just the three of you going to uh, to the red market? Yes, I don't want to go to the black market. <laughs> No, I don't. I will stay and I will write, continue writing my notes in my hotel. What not? All right. I suppose sociologically it'll be interesting and there's some safety in numbers despite what we've already had befall us. All right, I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do, not wish, I do not wish. I will stay. <laughs> stay at the hotel or by my lonesome. What could go wrong? Nothing. What indeed. <laughs> All right. So um, five of you head out to the red market. Uh, and it, it takes about um, 30 minutes by, uh, uh, by a handsome cab, a horse-drawn cab. And uh, you get into, you, you seem to have, have crossed over some sort of invisible barrier um, and the buildings and the streets seem um, more shabby um, and um, the cab takes you to an area that is uh, it's a it's been cleared it looks like there was a building here at one time that has probably fallen and most of the rubble has taken away, been taken away you can still see the remnants of the foundation and little small portions of wall uh, but they're you know only about knee high uh, in certain parts. In other parts, it's you know ankle high. Um, but um, within the 
the confines of where this building once stood um, are all kinds of um, tents and, 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 and open air carts and stuff like that. Uh, and it is uh, absolutely bustling with people, even in broad daylight such as this. The oh, cabbie says, welcome to the red market. Thank you. Well, let's uh, stick close together and, you know, keep your hand on your wallet and whatnot. Um, and I, I've left like half of my money tucked away back in the room. So hidden. Okay. okay. If, if I get robbed here, it's not all good. Thinking ahead. I like that. I like it. Um, all right. So what are you guys looking for here in the red market? Myself, uh, just a gun replacement for what I had, which was a 38 revolver. I think I'll okay. be looking for the same. Yes. Okay. Uh, so it takes some time. You guys are walking through the market um, and you do see a vendor um, and he seems uh, friendly enough. He he seems uh, quite stern, but he has a he has a, a smile that that looks foreign to his face, and uh, even some of his teeth are missing, so it makes the smile even worse. Uh, but uh, he says, uh, uh, "Yes, welcome." Uh, he's at first just addressing Doctor Saladin, uh, and and what can I find for you, my friend? Well, I'm looking for a. 38 special. Well, of course, everything I have is special. Let's take a look. Uh, and there are all kinds of weapons. Um, give me a luck roll. Right. Oh, I got a 20. That's a pass. There are 38s available. That's right. For Edith, I point to the 38s. Is it happens? Um, yes, that one. The one with the uh, ivory handle. Oh, very good. Very good. Very nice. Um, and uh, I'll take that one. I don't need anything so fancy as you do, Dr. Saladin. The simple one will do. Oh, good choice. Good choice. Uh, each of you may make a firearms roll. Oh, fail. That's a hard success. Okay. Um, Edith, you look at your weapon that he's offering to sell you and um, it does not appear to have uh, been cared for very well. Um, and did you have a hard success, you said? Yes. Uh, neither does the one that uh, the pearl handled one that uh, Saladin picked out. They both seem uh, in need of some TLC mm -hmm. greatly. Dr. Saladin, put that down. These obviously haven't been well cared for. And if this oh. is the type of rubbish you're going to be offering us, I think we can go find another booth. Thank you. Oh, no, you, you insult me. You insult me. This is, this is. You uh, insult me with these wares. I know what I'm looking for in a gun. Do you have any real guns? Oh, please, please, please forgive me. Forgive me. Um, this was this was uh, another merchant who had left this behind. This this is what you want, and uh, so he pulls a box out from behind, and uh, there are some other thirty eights in here. Um, you may each give me another firearm roll. Oh, that's how I passed. <laughs> I'm glad you did because I didn't. Okay, um, Doctor Saladin, these weapons look much better cared for. All right. 
So let's see. These two look okay. Do you agree, Edith? Yes, I think so. All right. Um, how much? Ugh. It is a it is an absolute steal. You are robbing me. I'm having to try and feed my family. It is only um, well in your dollars, uh, twenty dollars each. That's insane. Mm-mm. I am trying to feed a family. Look at the quality weapons. You already realize that this is quality. Uh, come you on, offered Edith. us garbage That's... at first, and we're buying two from you. Yeah. No, I think we should go try somebody else. Did I say 20? I didn't. I meant 20 for the two of them. 10 each. Well. 15. 15 each? Excellent. No, no, no absolutely no. not. 15 for both of them. I have children to feed. You are yeah, children me. to feed. Perhaps if uh, you were to include boxed ammunition of good quality, 20 would be acceptable. Yeah. Done. And he pulls out a fresh box of ammo for each. All right. 20. We give him the money. All right. Does, does he have a machete or something? You just ask a little boy for one of those, he probably <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> hey, can I have that machete? Sure. Sure, mister. <laughs> Ah, the machete. It is very easy, easy, easy. I give you, here is my best knife. This is the best knife. And he he pulls a blade down and and puts a knife down for you. Is that from South America? (laughs) $10. Best knife. $10 for a knife when we just paid you $10 for a gun? No, 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 no. But look how much bigger the knife is than the gun. Oh. <laughs> Two dollars. I have family to feed. I have five kids. Yeah, but uh, there's no way you paid anywhere close to two dollars for this knife. <sighs> And he he takes a, uh, there was a rock in a box. He goes, I give whetstone, you have whole thing, $8. Three. Three dollar, I have kids to feed. I have five kids. Seven dollar. How about this? Five, one for each of your lovely children. Ah. Americans, you drive a very hard bargain. Five dollars. All right, you bought a machete and a rock. (laughs) Anybody else looking for anything? I'd like to, you know, sort of look at antiques and cultural oddities and not necessarily with an eye to buy anything. But, okay. you know, statuettes of strange gods and you know. So, yeah, and you he looks around and he goes, <laughs> you go away. There's nothing here for you. Go away. You, sir, sure. in the very fine helmets. What would you like? He's like slowly putting down that cup of tea. (laughs) He may be frozen. I think the shopkeep hypnotized Cuthbert. Quick. Yeah. I have become hypnotized. (laughs) It's the heat. Mild heat stroke. Oh, yes. What was that? I'm terribly sorry. What what can I help you with? What would you like? Oh, I am just traveling with my companions here through this lovely neighborhood. That is all. Thank you so much. Go away. Go away. Go away. Go, go, go. Go away. 
All right, we go. This is us going. All right. Uh, we will, um, we're going to bring this episode to a close. Um, uh, but before we do, Dr. Augustine, um, yes. uh, you are in your hotel room and, uh, uh, and you feel, you feel like, um, stretching. Like you just, you, the, the road weary, your bones just need, just need to have that, that expanse, you know, you just have to reach all the way out and just, just get that, that out of you. Um, but in doing so, you feel your, um, shirt, uh, writhe a bit. Um, I'm gonna loosen everything a bit more. Okay. I'm gonna and maybe feel, maybe pull on my shirt a bit and then feel at the bottom and work my way up, make sure. Yeah. yeah, I don't feel any substance, blood you, or whatever. And and you can even get and kind of train your head to look around and check out, you know, in a mirror. But uh, yeah, you see um, almost like these these finger width, uh, and they're they're a pink fleshy color, and each one is about uh, the width of a finger, uh, but these tendrils are like stretching out. And there's got to be, you know, three or maybe four dozen on each side of of these just thin, finger thin, you know, worm like, boneless, writhing um, tentacles are stretching outward uh, in both directions, and they they you know as you continue to to reach and stretch. You're, they're fanning out and they're, they're like stretching and they get to about twice the length of your arm uh, before they just start to kind of quiver. They're, they seem that like they're at their full uh, length. And then, and then upon an exhale and you kind of collapse your, 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 your chest and collapse your lungs down, they zip right back in. What the fuck? Make, make, Make a sand roll. Um, uh, that is a fail. Okay, lose a d6. Jesus. <laughs> oh, God, that's a six. <laughs> okay. Uh, give me an idea roll. That's 14 out of 70, so that's um, yeah, that's an extreme success. Okay. Yeah, you um have a flash of the uh of the nightmares that uh have been uh uh plaguing you and just you, you know have they, they've been escaping you, you these dreams. Uh, but these nightmares, um, come to you and, um, there's these strange towering creatures, um, with, uh, with, uh, trumpeted and, 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 and clawed extensions. And they're just, they're frightening to, to, uh, to witness, and um, you have a um, horrible, horrible fear of um, of slugs and anything writhing. Yeah, I, I'll probably pass out as well. <laughs> yes. As I, yes. I kind of will maybe take one step back towards the towards the beds and. 
about to well, you, say. Oh, no. You do you do stumble and fall. Um, so you you begin to stumble and you're about to fall, and it looks like your head is probably gonna crash on the corner of a strong uh, table. Um, and as you're falling, um, you suddenly kind of stop falling and you, you're, you're, you're almost suspended at this weird angle, like impossibly. Um, and then you realize you can feel that you're holding on to the walls and you, you see all these little tendrils have shot out through your sleeves and under the, the waistband of your shirt. Um, and, and they're like sticking and holding onto the walls and then through, through some of them pulling and some of them, you know, releasing your, your tipping body is, is pivoted so that you're not going to hit the corner of the table. And then they all kind of extend so that you just kind of lay down on the floor and then they zip back up into your body as, as black and darkness can, uh, takes over you. And uh, with that, let's bring this episode to a close. (laughs) Holy smoke. Um, Our players included Josh Harwood, Morgan Llewellyn, Holly Buto, Stuart Lively, David Gastway, and myself with John Hook as the Keeper of the Secrets. We have a Discord server where you can chat with our other members, you can set up private games, and you can learn the finer arts of gameplay and game mastery. There's a link below. We're currently producing up to four shows a week with music and sound effects added in post-production in order to create a richer listener experience. We provide audio-only versions of our shows free for the download from Podbean or iTunes. The costs involved with the show are provided almost entirely by our patrons. Without them, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. If you'd like to help support our show, please visit our Patreon account. Just a dollar to a month helps us a lot. You can find a link in the description below. Like, share, and subscribe to our channel and punch the bell icon for updates on our latest shows and leave us some comments. We enjoy reading them and answering questions you might have. This is Tom Rayleigh, together with all the members of our gaming club, inviting you to journey with us once again into the darkness for another adventure into the universe of H.P. Lovecraft and the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. Until next time, good luck, good gaming.